back pain. I don't know if it's just because like getting older or maybe um, like weight training or maybe it's my bed. I don't know, but I have a little bit of lower back pain and then um, my hips pop a lot. Okay. Um, so I feel like, oh, and I'm like constantly cracking like my back and okay. everything. So I just feel like I would, that's something that I would really enjoy. Mm -hmm. Okay. So lower back pain, self cracker, you work out a lot. And how old are you? 28. Okay. Not too, it's, that's not a getting older kind of thing. Okay. You know, if you're a professional football player and you're 28 yeah. year old, okay. well, what do you do for a living? Um, so I oversee customer service for an auto group. So, we, mm -hmm. um, but before that, I was always in the fitness industry. So this is kind of like a new okay. thing for me. Mm -hmm. um, so before, like working in the fitness industry, I was up and like walking around a lot. And mm -hmm. now my job, I'm just Seated. sitting mm -hmm. all day at a computer, mm -hmm. typing like all day. So I definitely feel like my back has started to hurt more mm -hmm. since then. So typically, when you sit for a living that results in a very simple mechanical low back pain. Mm -hmm. Now the chiropractic is gonna be great for getting you out of pain and getting your body maybe back to the way that it was before all this mechanical low back pain started showing up. But we definitely have to correct the, the issue. Yeah. All right, so you have to talk to your boss about that. Yes. Okay. All right, so let's talk about how long have you been sitting for? How long is that? How long have you had that job? Um, I've had it for almost a year and a half. When you have low back pain, is it typically in the middle? Is it one side more than the rest? Or more so, one yeah, side more than the other? Yeah, it's just right in the middle. Right, right in, in the middle. middle of my back. It'll like feel tight or, yeah, it's just overall pain. Okay. Does it ever go up your spine to no. upper back? Do you ever have any pain down the back of your legs? No. Any numbness or tingling in your feet? No. So when you have low back pain, what do you do to make it better? I just try to um, like stretch out my lower back. Okay. Like I'll, um, I think like when you put your foot like this, and mm -hmm. I, I don't know, I, I saw it on the internet, to um, stretch out my lower back and then I just try cracking my back myself. How do you try to crack it? I just twist. Twist. Yeah. Okay. Usually from a chair? Uh, usually standing up. Okay. Yeah. Mm, okay. So when you stretch, is that a part of a normal routine or is it just like my back hurts now I'm gonna stretch? I've been trying to do more stretching at home, like just doing yoga mm -hmm. tutorials in okay. my living room. So I definitely have been stretching more, but when it comes to like the lower back pain, I'm just stretching it out specifically just whenever it okay. hurts, not routinely. Okay, very good. All right, so do you have any other pain? Do you ever have any uh, neck pain? Um, so I don't really have neck pain and I'm not sure if this um, is related, but I have I feel like my chest needs to crack Okay, a lot. I don't do you know. ever try to crack it by maybe opening? Yeah, it? so I have tried to do that um, I've done I had a physical therapist actually do one of the things where you like put your hands behind and okay. then they like come up Yeah, and that kind of worked, but I, I also feel like as I'm getting older too or just like as time progresses, it's getting a little worse. I don't know if that has something to do with chiropractic or if that's totally something different, but it yeah. just feels um, like, I guess, tight. Like it needs to crack and it's not all the time, but. Yeah. Is that also from sitting at the desk? Or was it before that? Have you, did you have that feeling previously? That was previously, um, but it wasn't as bad. Okay. Yeah. How long have you had that for? Mm, I mean, three years. Okay. All right, no injuries or anything that you can think of mm -mm. to your chest or upper back or neck? Um, I did have a compression fracture one time in my spine. Mm -hmm. um, I got into a car accident and I had one of those. And that's when I was, I think I was a freshman in high school, so it's mm -hmm. been a while. Um, but I never felt like anything after that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that plays into anything, but it's been fine for me. Okay. Do you remember where it, the compression fracture was? I don't. I think it. I don't think it was my upper spine. I think. You remember it, if it was a T or an L? I I would have no idea. Okay. It was. It it hurt for a while, but it wasn't too bad. It was like if I sneezed or something, like it would okay. hurt. Mm -hmm. Um. But I got over it pretty quickly. Okay. But yeah, they did an X-ray and they found that. Okay. Very good. All right. Do you have any other pain? Any ankle pain? Knee pain? Um, I do get knee pain when I work out sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, both sides, right side? Both sides. It kind of just like switches back and forth. Okay. 
um, my I used to do bodybuilding competitions, like mm-hmm. bikini competitions, and I would always tell my coach that my knee was hurting, and he always told me I had a tight IT band, and I just needed to like roll out my legs more. Um, but it is something that it's been ongoing when I work out. So mm-hmm. usually I'll just you know, try to take it easier or just stop completely because I don't want to make it worse. Okay, very good. Yeah. Okay, very good. Yeah. That's <laughs> what a lot of competitive weightlifters don't do is yeah. stop when they're injured. So good for you. Okay, do you ever have any headaches? Yeah, occasionally, but nothing like regular routine. And okay. they're never really bad. Mm-hmm. Do you know the details of your birth? Do you know if you were born natural or cesarean? Cesarean. Okay. All right, so have you ever been to a chiropractor before? You said no. No. How do you feel about getting adjusted? I feel really excited because I have wanted to go to a chiropractor for a really long time, but I also feel super nervous because I'm I'm also one of those people that I like watching those videos on YouTube, mm-hmm. and oh, it just makes me nervous, but also really excited. So. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's do this. Let's start off with an exam. Let's see what your spine says and then get you adjusted, okay? Okay. Okay, we're going to start off with a very gentle scan on the top of your spine, okay? the back of my fingers now to do a temperature scan. Okay, very symmetrical. Uh, at the, there's a little bit more heat coming off of the top of your spine, but it feels like once I get to here, <clears throat> it just be, the skin changes its texture. It becomes a little bit more damp. Like it's not as this is all smooth here, and then it becomes starts to have friction right here, and so that just tells me that there's a little variation in how the skin is conducting electricity or conducting nerve impulses. And that may be an um, indication that there's some mechanical pressure somewhere. But your spine is nice and straight up and down, okay? There's no curvatures here, okay. no deviations. And if I had to guess where your compression fracture was, I'd probably say it was here in this mid to lower thoracic spine. Okay, I'm going to push a little bit deeper into the muscles. Very strong. Your back is incredibly strong. Oh, good. Thank you. And you have great muscle tone here. It's very symmetrical. There's just a little bit of a rotation right here. <clears throat> this is why I think the, the compression fracture was there. Okay, I'm going to probably the SI joints just right below your belt line, okay? Okay, do you have any tenderness here? No. Okay, right side. Do you have any tenderness here? No. Okay, let's do this. Turn to the left. Go down. No, no, no. Keep your, keep your head. Oh, yeah. Yes. You can look straight ahead. Look with where your body is pointed there. Okay, do you have any tenderness here? No. Here? Mm-mm. Here? No. Good, now turn to the right. Any tenderness here? No. Here? Nope. Does this feel like this? They feel equal? Do they feel the same? Does this one feel different? Oh, no, I think they feel the same. Okay, good. Okay, let's do this. Keep your feet together, and then what you're going to do, I'm going to look at how your SI joints are moving here. 
what you're going to do is open your knees. Keep your feet on the ground where they are and open your knees. Good. Now close. Good. Open. Close. Open. Close. Open. Close. A little restricted here on the left SI. Okay, go ahead and march in place. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> okay, looking at your back first. We look it looks like when you lift go ahead, keep just keep walking. I'm gonna talk, don't pay attention to me. Okay, good. Very symmetrical here, movement of the low back. Okay, stop. I'm going to measure your glute fibers now, okay? You're going to feel my fingertips on the back of your hamstrings. So we're going to go like this right here. We're, just, we're going to trace up to the bottom of the glute folds. They look pretty even here. Looking from the top, they look even maybe slightly external rotated on the left. So what are you looking for with this? Like what does the temperature tell you? The temperature tells us that there's an asymmetry, that there's a difference. Usually that the spine is working harder on one side than the other. There's less efficiency. And when there's less efficiency, that's a good indicator that all of the nerve and muscle connections, all of the tracks that go from your brain to the muscles, that they're not all fire. It's like there's traffic mm -hmm. somewhere in that system, somewhere in those roads. Right here in this thoracic lumbar transition. That's where the readings start to pick up. Okay, go ahead. Walk straight away. A little bit faster. You can go all the way down to the end. Very good. A little bit of feet, toe, a little bit of walking on your toes. Did you do ballet? No. Okay, a little bit of toe walking there. Very bird like. <laughs> Okay, keep walking good, and then flip around, go the other way, all the way down. All right, so the feet look good. No pronation, no supination happening there in the ankles. That's good. Come back this way. Let your arms swing. Let your arms dangle. Looking at the shoulders, we have a high shoulder on the right and a little bit of head tilt towards the right as well. Go, go back one more time. Okay, and then looking at the hips, hips look like an even swing from left to right. Maybe a little bit of restriction moving to the left, just like we saw in the seated open-close test. Looking at the hips from the front. Very symmetrical though, arm swing. Very good. Okay, lots of exam stuff left to do. Before we adjust, we'll practice one first. Okay, so there won't be any surprises or anything okay. like that. Nice, gentle breathing. Push your legs out to the side. Push, yeah, good. Push, push. Good, relax. I'm gonna push down into your hips. Do you have any pain when I push into your sacrum here? Any discomfort? No, but that um, is actually an area like, if I'm sitting for a while, I mm -hmm. can stand up and if I kind of like, I guess contract my glutes, mm -hmm. it pops right there. Okay, like here, um, here. More like, here, a little, like but right there. Okay. But it doesn't hurt. Okay. Like this doesn't hurt. What about here? Any discomfort here? Um, there's like a a tiny, tiny bit, of like a sharp. Okay. Pain. Do you feel anything here? No. Here. No. Right, short, stay short. Let's say yes. Block underneath of your right hip, okay? Mm -hmm. Good, down. <clears throat> I'm gonna put a block underneath your left hip, good, and down. 
Okay, I'm gonna push down into this left hip again. Okay, do you still feel that sharp pain? It's very small. It feels like, I don't know, it feels like some, I don't know how to, to describe it. It's just like a very, very small pain. So let's see what's happening in the rest of your spine. Okay, let your shoulders relax here. Nice, gentle breathing. Okay, I'm going to use an instrument now to start loosening up your spine, okay? Pressure's okay? But yeah, I've definitely noticed it with both of them. Okay, I'm gonna push back into your left hip again. Do you still feel that sharpness? No.
nice gentle breathing. We're going to do a spinal stretch here. Okay, I'm gonna practice. We're gonna practice one first, okay? Mm -hmm. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna breathe softly in through your nose, and then out through your mouth. So go and take a deep breath in through your nose, and out through your mouth. I'm gonna follow your breath down like this, and then at the end of your breath, we give a little push, okay? Mm -hmm. It already cracked a little because it's like ready to go. <laughs> okay, nice and gentle. Take a deep breath in through your nose. And out, gentle, gentle, let your shoulders down. Okay, again, breathing in through your nose. Okay, now this one's a little bit different. This time we push at the top of the in-breath, so you're gonna breathe all the way in and then we push, okay? Okay, deep breath in, far as you can go. Good, end out. So keeping your legs straight, lift this leg in the air. Good, down, left lumbar is firing. Okay, now let's do this side. Good, down. Okay, one more time, left leg. Good, down. All right, so we're gonna adjust the SI joint on both sides. So I typically sleep on my side. Mm -hmm. Is that bad for your back? What was the same side? I sleep on this side a lot, yeah. Do you put I'll, a... I'll like try to switch, but I feel like I always end up on the same side. Mm -hmm. Do you put a pillow in between your legs? Um, sometimes. All right, so the first thing that you should always do if you sleep on your side is put a pillow in between your legs. That way your hips aren't uneven. And so like right now, you're like this is like sloping down that way. Yeah. And that puts pressure on your SI joint. But if your hip was like that because you have a pillow in between, that's less pressure there yeah, in, your, okay. in your sacrum. So bring that down. The second thing that you have to do with your head. Right? And so right now you're on, a, on an incline. So mm -hmm. let me just do this. Good. So now put your head down. So like right now, your spine is completely aligned this way. But if you have too much pillow, then it pushes your head up. And if mm -hmm. you don't have enough pillow, then you're going to be slanted down this way. So you have to make sure that you have enough pillow underneath of your, of your head. And this is like the, a good amount? Yes. Okay. I think maybe I have too little pillow. Okay. Now, the other thing that can happen too is if you, is if you lay on your shoulder like this, then you don't need as much pillow. Because you don't have that much like space in between your, yeah. but ultimately you should sleep on your back. Okay. So this is how we adjust the low back, okay? I'm going to bend your top leg like this. I'm going to scoot you forward here on the front of the table. We're going to bring your shoulders forward like this. Arms cross. Just going to let your fingers fall. There you go. There, just like that. Okay, so what we're going to do here is I'm going to bring your, your hips down like this and your shoulders in that direction. We're going to stretch like that and we're going to push like that, okay? Okay, you're going to breathe. Good. Now let your body relax. Let everything go. Good. You see you're doing it. You're fine. Put another one in. And out. Good. That was perfect. One more. 
gentle. Good, gentle. Let your whole body sink in. Let your hips relax. Good. How'd that feel? That felt really good. Okay. Surprising. <laughs> Okay, one more time. Deep breath in. Good, and out. Go letting the shoulders go. Go letting the hips go. Good. Whoa. your back. Is it bad for me to crack my back on my own? No, but it doesn't feel like that, does it? No, no, no. Yeah. Nothing close. Okay, so I'm just going to do some very gentle traction, okay? Do a range of motion here. Okay, so the most important thing for the neck adjustment is that you, <clears throat> this is what you want to try to find this feeling right here. You're going to find the feeling of letting your head drop just like that. So I move your head over here, drop here. So we're gonna start on the right side. I'm gonna bring your head over to like right about here, Katie, and then just let your head drop. And then right from here, we're just gonna push in that direction like that, okay? Does it feel like loose, like my neck? Like are you relaxed? Yeah, yeah. Yes, okay. you're doing great. Okay. okay, you can close your eyes, nothing to look at right now. Go ahead and just let your head drop. Good, very good. Very gentle breathing, just let everything sink in. Good. <laughs> I have been so worried about that one mm -hmm. for so long, but that felt really good. Mm -hmm. No big deal, It was right? nice. Yeah, yeah. Get close your eyes. Don't pay attention to the microphone. <laughs> Gentle. Breathing. Good. Just let this kind of sink in here. Good. I'm gonna push in this direction like this. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, the middle. We're just testing. Seven, 
six, five, four, three. Feels like it's in the middle. I'm gonna let this kind of sink in, just let everything go. Oh. Okay. Yeah. We almost got all of it. Oh. There's a little bit more. This is gonna be. There's just a tiny one, so we just have to do a very gentle little push here. Okay. Good. Let your head drop. Oh. That one felt the best. Mm -hmm. I feel like. Sometimes um, when I do like the yoga at home, and I, you know, when you like you just roll your neck around to get mm -hmm. it stretched out, like. It almost feels like there was something kind Blinding. of, yes, like mm. kind of like crunchy. And I would just completely skip that step because I hate how that feels. Mm. And I feel like that last one, that was that thing. Awesome. Yeah. This is the only one that didn't want to go. Nope. Alright, so first I'm going to do a pelvic adjustment. So open your knees here and squeeze my fist in between your knees. Squeeze. Ow. Good, that was your pubic bone. Mm -hmm. Start with the ileocecal valve. We locate that by first locating the umbilical here. And then the ASIS this is the bony part of your hip in the front, okay? Okay, we connect those two lines and then we start from that point there. Ticklish? Very. <laughs> okay, here, put your put this hand on top of my hand, and that decreases the ticklishness. Okay, now moving to the pyloric sphincter. This is where the stomach empties into the duodenum, two inches above the umbilical. Okay, now this is a diaphragm release, okay? So what you're gonna do is breathe into your belly. Do some belly breaths. Good, now as you breathe out, suck your belly in. Good, do that again, in through your belly. Out, suck your belly all the way in. Good, okay, again, in, out. In, out. <laughs> Why is my stomach making those noises? Mm -hmm. That's called a bora borgamai. It is, we're just moving air around. We're just moving water and fluids around. Or breakfast. What time did you eat breakfast? Like seven. Yeah, so eight, nine, ten. So we're way into the, the transverse and even the descending colon here. So this is just breakfast moving along. Okay, another deep breath in. Out. In. Belly breath, good. Belly. Out. And through your belly. Normal? Yes. 
Not only is it normal, but it's awesome. Oh. <laughs> You're gonna be the, the gurgly stomach. Oh. resting on your belly. Okay, so this is another neck adjustment. Okay, this is a full spine adjustment. So what we're gonna use is serve, we're gonna use the towel to support your neck. A nice gentle breathing. I'm gonna follow your breath and we're gonna have traction in your spine in this direction, okay? Okay, breathing in through your nose. Oh my gosh. <sighs> oh wow. I feel like I've been eating that for a really long time, though. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's crazy. Gently slowly get in from Daniel. Just to see you over it. All right, let's do this. Bring your hands behind your neck. Let this relax here. Let the shoulders relax. Look straight ahead. Put them loose, loose. Shoulder up like this. Ooh. Nice gentle breathing. Sometimes, like, different parts of your body, you have, like, this yellowing in your skin. Did you ever notice that? Well, I did self-tan. Is that what it is? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Good, because there's a very serious condition <laughs> where that does happen. Some yeah, I know. Said that. I self -tan it. <laughs> this is a pulse reading that comes from traditional Chinese medicine and also Ayurvedic medicine, the medicine of ancient India. This is not a, a Western medicine where Western medicine just measures rate, rhythm, contour, and amplitude at one point. This is a three point. Very balanced, very quick. Okay, I'm gonna push a little bit deeper.
it's very balanced, it's very poised. There's only, there's no disrupted energy in any of the meridians of your body. I'm gonna push a little bit deeper before I make that statement, but yeah. Very balanced pulse, very symmetrical. Are you a Libra? No. All right, walk around a little bit. Take me for a test drive. Yeah, I have like no pain at all. Yeah, the rest feels good.